Oh, praise the Lord. Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, this is a kind of a short video, but I wanted to share it. And uh, I also want someone, I want to share something with you that I'd like to hear some opinion on because I'm still weighing this out. And uh, you know, you hear and talk to people uh, once you get into questioning the Bible and you get into the Torah and understanding different things, it amazes me how people uh, really go off to different extremes and everybody has their own little specialty thing that they want to debate with you on their issue because they know the best but they don't know about all the different issues. And Deuteronomy 4.2 through 4.2 and 3 actually, this is something that's been, been kind of on the side burner for me and uh, because some people say that the book of John isn't authentic and they say 2 Peter is not authentic and, and pretty soon where do we go with the New Testament and then the book of Revelation is very clear where the Apostle John says that nobody should add or subtract to this book of prophecy so it's clear that he's talking about that book and so I have no problem with that but uh, I, I, as I'm questioning the Bible and then it says, I'm learning the Torah, learning the Old Testament. Uh, I still have troubles with this because uh, I'm going to just read it to you. Deuteronomy 4, 2 and 3. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You have seen for yourselves what the Lord did with regard to Baal of Peru, Peru, whatever it is, how the Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peru. I haven't studied that one yet. Verse 4, while those of you who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. And I have more of a stronger view of, of Yahweh, of, of the Lord, than, uh, and I've always known him to be more on the sober, serious side. See, I think a lot of the church nowadays paint him as a Santa Claus, and uh, they don't give him a lot of backbone, where he doesn't tolerate stuff. He doesn't tolerate sin. And I want to read something here. But anyway, in the comments section, if you got some tips for me, when it says do not add or subtract, is this talking about strictly the Torah, the five books? Yet Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, talks about the Psalms and the prophets and different things like that. So then does it talk about don't add as in to the Old Testament? See, I don't know where the line is because technically the New Testament would violate Deuteronomy 4.2 uh, directly. But yet, Yeshua in one of the Gospels says that my word will never pass away until the earth is gone. Okay, that was before the canon was put together. So was he talking about just strictly... You see where my dilemma is? Like, where is the line? The whole church system says the entire Bible is the word of God, where I believe the Old Testament is the word of God. Even Paul says that to Timothy. He says that what you grew up with, that was breathed of God. He never said his letters was, see. And so I have no problem questioning the New Testament and studying. And so uh, I just thought I'd ask. I mean, I'm honestly, I don't know where I stand on it. I mean, I'm just being honest there. Okay, what I want to talk about today is in Acts 18, well, Acts 18, 24 through 27, and a little bit into 19. And uh, for years I admired this guy. And the, a couple nights ago I was doing research on something and I, I stumbled through this because what a couple of words popped up. I do word searches. And uh, in Acts 18, 24 through 27, listen about this guy. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an elegant man, competent in scripture. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being firm in his spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, 
though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogues. Now this is an incredible description of somebody we all want in our church. Uh, I've always admired this guy because he seems like a lone ranger. It doesn't talk about him having disciples. It doesn't talk about, uh, he's only mentioned in a small section, but a man of integrity. It's just incredible. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Yeshua, Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogues. Okay, and verse 26 is what bothers me now. Okay, and I want you to think about this because 90, I, I, I remodel homes. 90% of the people I work for is the wife. The guy might call me, I'll meet with a couple, but she's a contact person, she knows the color, she knows the carpet, she knows how she wants her cabinets. See, and so I've never had troubles with that, okay? As my wife says, the inside of the house is hers, the outside's mine. I got trains and tunnels and bridges and everything all over every place. <laughs> she said no trains in, a ton in the house, but when I had, had my back go bad, she let me bring some of my engines in here. And these all do run, they'll go back out to the train shop now that my back's getting a little bit better. Okay, he both spoke like in the thing, but 26. But, but when Priscilla and Aquila, and Aquila heard him, these are two followers or disciples of Paul. And I, I got a, I, can't, I don't remember seeing if it even told where Paul was at. Why didn't Paul talk to him? But when Priscilla and Aquila heard them, they took him aside and explained to him the way of the Lord more accurately. More accurately. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who, through grace, had believed. They converted, converted him over to Pauline doctrine of saved by grace, salvation by grace. See, if this, all this were, and I looked up two or three different translations of stuff, but it bothers me when those two ladies heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of the Lord more accurately. And I get things on Facebook, and I have people come to our doors, and I have people, how do I say this correctly? Women have an ability to get men to listen to them and do what they say. <laughs> Your cast coming from an old male chauvinist. But uh, the ladies set him straight. Now, let's go on down to verse 19, Acts 19.3. Paul said, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John's baptism with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was come after him, that is Jesus. See, Paul knew what the gospel of Christ was. He knew the gospel that Jesus taught. He knew what John the Baptist taught. But he, Paul, listened to the light. And I don't know at what point if we ever figured out that that wasn't Christ or I there's a lot of questions I have guys but this part bothered me how quickly a man who has this description or a woman a lady of men anybody who could have this incredible description of them could turn and start following a different a different gospel see people right now think I'm following a different gospel people think I've got into the Hebrew roots movement People think I got into all this other whatever stuff. It's like, no, I am studying what Yeshua, Jesus Christ, taught. What his disciples taught. What he taught them. What John the Baptist taught. What the Father taught. I got scriptures all through the Old Testament showing that Jesus spoke and shared the exact same thing that he always has. And so, uh, I guess I just want you to think about that, folks. Uh, no matter how wise we are, we still need the Holy Spirit. And it says he was fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught 
accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he only knew the baptism of John. But when you hook up with a church or you hook up with a group, they make you feel part of them. See, I think a lot of times the churches manipulate people emotionally. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters, we're supposed to love each other, we're not supposed to judge each other and all this here. And, uh, it, it, anyway, that's, that's the thing. See, so I just wanted to share that. Uh, this, to me, this is absolute proof that there's two Gospels. There's no way that you can say that there's only, that Paul taught the same thing. Because it clearly states here that through grace he had believed. And Jesus taught, and John taught, repentance. See, folks, this, this is, I had never seen this before, but I've always admired this man. And I hope someday that someone will speak that out of me. But anyway, uh, I guess that's it. Father God, thank you so much uh, for this man and for these people trying to share. I don't know where your line's at. All I know is Yeshua said, obey my commandments. Do as I tell you. And then Paul said the same thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow my gospel. Listen to my gospel. They both said the same thing. There's clearly two different Gospels. Holy Spirit, please have mercy on us and please help enlighten people to this. Help us to see it's in plain sight if we will allow ourselves to question the New Testament, question the characters in it, and learn from it. In your son's precious name, amen.